Locati here. Today we're talking about Bleed Bow Slayer because Gladiator is dead. We have a very strong bow slayer that is using split arrow and puncture as our primary sources of damage. So we are a two button build. You're going to use split arrow for clear. You're going to use puncture for bossing and single target. And before we get too much into the POB, let's go ahead and take a look at our mapping. We have a nice little P16 8 mod map juiced up and ready to blast on our current build which is doing about 18 mil DPS with puncture. And on clear with split arrow, we are doing about four mil DPS. We are running split arrow again as our primary source of clear damage. We are using chain to spread out that clear damage. Probably running about four to five million bleed DPS in this setup on split arrow. And we can off screen just about everything. Bleed explosions from hemophilia really help with the clear speed on the build, along with headsmen from our slayer. And so as you can see, you just off screen most everything. Silo is probably the least favorable map to run this build on. If you ran this build on jungle valley or dunes or beach or something on a very open map, you could really blast away and kill everything before you even see it. And for big tanky things, you do have the access to puncture. We are not running snipe on our puncture, although that is an option. Snipe puts you at bleed cap, but then you're stuck with the charging mechanic to get it up. Instead, we're just running a regular puncture for our single target, and that puts us at about 20 million bleed DPS as it sits right now, with the ability to get to the bleed cap once you get higher levels of gear. And so I think that's a much better choice overall. So that little tanky guy, you throw a couple punctures into him and he just goes right down. And you can still dive into things and kill him just like that. And for bossing, you'll primarily use your puncture to do damage to the boss, although your split arrow can be used while you're moving around to attack quickly and to build up stacks of your rupture. We are running Purity of Element on our defensive layer so that we do have an increased amount of resistances in case you're having trouble hitting your resistances with gear. It also makes you ailment immune so you don't have to worry about things like shock and ignite. It keeps chill off of you and so it's a very good defensive layer overall. I lost sight of the boss there for a minute. And boss dead, map done. Very simple, straightforward, and easy. All right, so now that mapping is done, let's take a look at our options. We have an entry level build for this character. These are all very cheap entry level items to the build. We're using Hyrie's Truth, Dark Ray Vectors, and Hemophilia for the bleed explosions that you saw are really one of the biggest benefits of the build. Off screen killing with bleed explosions is phenomenal. We are using a Darkness and Thrones Stygian Vice with a couple of searching eye jewels that give us a lot of bonus damage with our bow attacks. Now this all in all, I don't know, one, two divs, maybe three, it depends on the market, but this is a cheap entry level to the build. It does about a third of the DPS of the one I was playing, but the bleed explosions are going to carry a lot of the clear. Then we have puncture, which we're going to run with snipe on the low budget build. We don't really like snipe, but it's such a powerful multiplier. So you will be using snipe to do single target DPS on the low budget build. We move away from that very quickly though, because the quality of life of not having to use snipe is very, very strong. We are life tapping on the low budget build, so we don't have to worry about mana because we don't have enough hit DPS to maintain mana leech well enough. Again, Assassin's Mark, Mark on Hit, Determination and Flesh and Stone for Defenses, Enduring Cry with Urgent Orders, both for Endurance Charge Generation as well as the heal that it gives us, and a small cast when damage taken Molten Shell to try to stay alive. And again, Precision, we are reserving, and it's coming in from Hyrie's Truth here. On our gear, we've got a... 400 DPS crit based low attack speed bow. These are important. Low attack speed, high crit will allow us to play the build the way it's supposed to be played. High attack speed kills our bleed damage, so don't do it. 
a spiked point arrow quiver with critical strike chance and physical damage to attacks realistically this is just one that i grabbed the damage over time multiplier with attack skills is not serving us any benefit so we can go ahead and pull that off we would actually much rather have just the crit strike multiplier on it and so this makes it easier for you to find this quiver right here on our haunted bassinet we're just looking for a life armor evasion and a lot of resistances on our lion eyes vision we're just looking for six links if you don't know how to six link the item it costs div black morgan beast crafting hemophilia for our bleed explosions dark ray vectors for more frenzy charges iris truth for precision and global crit strike multiplier and then we have some amethyst rings with just resistances and life on them just find one that has max life couple resistances craft one on there if you can't get your resistances squared away with these items you can use your searching eye jewels to get those resistances as well for flask we're just running granite jade silver diamond nothing complex here and then a life flask as well we are running a lethal pride on your lethal pride you're going to look for lethal prides that have physical damage do we have some physical damages here you got to increase physical damage there we got an attack leech there we're going to increase physical damage there so you want as many of these physical damages as you can get this is just a cheap one real quick tutorial on fine timeless jewels i include this in all of my guides i have this preset lethal pride any conqueror duelist node filter nodes sort by full dps double damage and physical damage are the only things that matter to us all you got to do in here to find a lethal pride for your character is open this screen up hit search highlight the top line highlight the next few lines copy that trade url dump this into any old browser tab you don't have to be picky and boom you have timeless jewels and as you can see they are not expensive if you search for them correctly so find one that fits you uses 14985 is 90 chaos if we hop back in our spreadsheet and go 14985 that is two 20 percent increased physical damage notes very very potent these these up here are three 20 percent fizz damage notes this one even has a double damage note on it and so these are 17 see 269 469 and 720 get 216 right there 100 chaos or a much stronger lethal pride jewel so make sure you are utilizing your lethal pride jewel search inside the pob it is already set up for you it doesn't require any thought from you just get it done now the rest of our items we are running a cobalt jewel here this is just for some additional stats or some additional resistances or some maximum life it's just a little utility jewel for you to get what you need now on our passive tree this is all pretty straightforward we are going to take bravery we are going to take Art of the Gladiator. We are going to take every Frenzy Charge node on the tree for obvious reasons. We are a Frenzy node stacking build. And we're going to take this Damage Over Time Mastery node. This is very powerful. We're going to take life everywhere we can take life on this tree. We are taking some spell suppression so that we have some spell suppression. We are relying primarily on endurance charges to keep us alive. And so we don't have to cap spell suppression. We just want a very high roll on it to reduce incoming damage so we don't get clipped by two or three hits in a row. We are taking Charge Mastery with Disciple of Slaughter here. We are anointing Disciple of Unyielding on our amulet. Um, we do have Lethality here for crit. We have Bleeding Mastery for crit. And we have Heart Seeker with Critical Mastery for crit. And then we are a Perfect Agony build. So do not get damage over time multipliers on your gear. We are only going after global critical strike multipliers on our gear. And finally, we do have a marked mastery here with chance to gain frenzy charge on marked hits on the entry level budget of the build. Once you get up to the low level budget of the build, we are going to include leech mastery here. We're going to switch all of our skills over to not having life tap on them. We're going to drop snipe in favor of rupture, vicious proj, and swift affliction. This will mean that our puncture on the low budget build does about the same damage as the puncture on our entry level budget build, but takes away the need to stand there and charge snipe up to do damage and so we get to keep leeching we keep leech mana we keep leech health we continue to pump out damage with puncture and it gives us more mobility as we move around and dodge stuff if you're obsessed with doing the most damage possible you can go ahead and run snipe if you want to run snipe 
you just slot snipe in pull off rupture 14 mil dps pull off vicious proj 14 mil dps so on and so forth but we're not running snipe because it is a great quality of life and 8 mil dps is more than enough for all the bossing you're going to be doing when you're in a low budget situation now i went up to kind of a medium budget situation this is probably 30 div worth of items on the character um i do have a really nice bow that i got i do have a really nice quiver that i got i have a decent helm here i have a lion's eye that got six linked for 25 chaos off the auction house that has increased damage and max res this is a really really strong one um i do have extra frenzy charts on hemophilia i think this was like 100 chaos uh, obviously we have Rallakesh's and Alessia's Delight with a corruption for increased critical strike multiplier during flask effect. And so the, the gear on this is a little bit higher budget and obviously the damage is representative of that. Split arrow is 4 million DPS on clear and then our puncture is 18 mil DPS whenever you're not using snipe. And again, if you're like obsessed with min maxing as much as possible, you can throw a snipe on here. All you gotta do is pick something to pull off and you've got almost bleed cap DPS on a 30 mil budget on a bow bleed build that has 12K max fizz hit, 60K effective health pull, 34K max elemental hit, 10K evasion rating, 14k armor and 81% spell suppress. It is tanky, it is blasty, it's fun, it's fast, and it's back. Lead bow is good, it's just not gladiator anymore. Now, real quick, like end of the game viewpoints, I don't have it included here because I'm starting to avoid putting 100, 200, 300 divs into the spreadsheet. Um, we will look at maybe changing to include that later, but we are still a slayer. We can get gratuitous violence. It's not terribly expensive. If you want real bleed explosions, you can get gratuitous violence here. That would open us up for a double frenzy charge glove here with uh, some extra damage on frenzy charges. A lot of other options we can upgrade here for improving the character. I think realistically, you'll be able to hit bleed cap with puncture without snipe here. And our split arrow, we should be able to hit approximately 15 million bleed DPS on clear with the gladiator bleed explosions. So if you really enjoy bleed bow and you want to make this work and be what you're playing this season, follow the guide, get up to where we are at the current build, and we can figure out how to make sure that you have the most fun you can with this build. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching the video. As always, come by Twitch if you have any questions or check out this video that YouTube thinks you like or check out our latest upload over there. Peace.